نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وعاله وصحابه واهل بيته اجمعين اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل نفس ذائقه الموت وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنَ أُجُورَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ لتبلغن في أموالكم وأنفسكم ولتسمعن من الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم ولتسمعن من الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم ومن الذين أشركوا أذى كثيرا وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ صدق الله العظيم Dear respectable brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Thank you, Dr. Ahmed Zaki for introduction and reminding me and all of us briefly about the journey of our beloved Jamaat organization, Islamic Circle of North America, how we started in the late 60s and 70s as a small group of brothers and sisters with a vision to start an organization and a movement of brothers and sisters committed for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring a change in their lives, to submit to the deen of Allah and to share the truth of Islam with their families, with the society at large, with their neighbors and with their fellow citizens to succeed in this life and the hereafter. We had the dream to raise our families and children who would be best citizen of our country and also the best Muslims to serve the cause of Islam as true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And alhamdulillah, we see that the uh, growth of our children like Dr. Ahmad Zaki, you have seen, alhamdulillah, may Allah give barakah in all of our children and all our families and all the Muslims and all our brothers and sisters here and all across the globe, inshallah. In the few minutes that we have, I'd like to share with you these ayat of Quran, Surah Ali Imran, 185, 186. I was hoping that I would be able to share with you this PowerPoint, but if it will cooperate, inshallah, with me. In these ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just these two ayat, He tells us the purpose of creation of the human beings. And that in this life, the individual, the human beings are going to face the tests and the trials. And once they go through these tests and trials, and how they're going to go through these tests and trials has also been outlined and they have been provided the guidance. This is not just a blind or a darkness through which they have to go through. The light of guidance has been provided. But once they go through this journey in a successful manner, then there is an eternal life of success. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that each individual 
shall have a taste of death. So this life is very short. And as a matter of fact, so short than the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when we'll be asked, when they will be asked how long you lived in this life, they will say, Ashiyatun aw duhaha, maybe part of the night, or maybe one afternoon. They may have lived for 80 years or 90 or 100 years, but they may say we live for part of the night or one afternoon, not more than that. So this is the reality of this life. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on the day of judgment, you will be given the recompense of what you did. Only he who is saved from the fire of the hell and admitted to the paradise, to the Jannah, have attained the ultimate success, the real success which Quran calls its foes and falah, is for the individual who saved his or her skin from the hellfire and was able to enter the Jannah or the paradise. In this dunya, we have standards of success which we have made with our own mind from material point of view, but in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the real success is the success of the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this life and its wealth and its attractions is nothing but the chattels of deception. And then you will certainly be tried and tested in this world through your possessions and through yourselves. And you shall certainly hear this is another form of the test, and this is very much relevant to us here in North America. And that's why we want to talk about it and focus upon, upon this issue. You shall certainly hear much that will grieve you from those who receive the book, the people of the book before you, and from those who worship many gods, that is the mushrikun. But if you persevere, and you follow the path of taqwa, the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is the path of success. It will determine the ultimate success for you. So let us take these points one by one in the time that we have. First of all, the ultimate reality of this life is that every individual is going to face the death one day. And it is very close. Many of us, when we hear that someone passed away, immediately it comes to the mind that I'm still young and there's many years ahead of me. I have planned so many things, my career, my business, my investments and so on and so forth. So it's not for me, it's, I still have a lot of years to go. But in reality, the end is very near. The Quran warns us that the time is so near. So this warning comes from the pages of Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that Every individual, everything, as a matter of fact, is going to perish except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is going to be there forever, one who is irresistible and one who has no beginning and no end. So this, this gives us comfort that everything is perishable. It's not just one person or the other. No one is going to live forever. And then there is a day of resurrection that we have to be in with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then there will be, be a compensation, good or bad, depending upon what we do in this dunya. So the value of this world has been belittled in the, in the pages of Quran. And we are told, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ That the life of this world is only the enjoyment of deception. The, uh, Surah Al-Hadith talks about it in detail and give us example 
that just like the farmer which grows a crop or a garden and there are fruits, but it's for a very short period of time, very soon the crop or the trees, they become yellow and then the leaves fall and that there is nothing there. It looks like there is death in the field or in the, on the trees. That's the way this dunya is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whatever you are given is an enjoyment of the life of this world and its adornment. And that hereafter, which is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is better and will remain forever. Have you don't, no sense to understand this? But we must also understand from the teaching of Quran that death is not the end of life. Death is only one stage in the human existence. Then there is going to be another life coming, which is the real eternal life. And there is no end to that. There is no death after that then it's either eternal peace and enjoyment or it's eternal suffering for those who have disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imam Hadith, report of Abi Hurair radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, Aktiru dhikra hadhim illa zaad ya'ni al-mawt. That you should remember often the killer of pleasures, that is death. Remember your death as frequently as possible. And one reason is that your grave is calling you. There's another hadith which tells us our grave is calling us every day. That I am the place of loneliness. I'm the place of darkness. Bring with you some nur, some light. And that light is from your iman, from your faith, from your good deeds. Whoever remembers the death frequently, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides him the ability to repent for the sins and bring self-contentment and energy for the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who is a ghafil, who neglects to remember the death, then there is a delay in tawbah, at repentance. There is a lack of contentment and there is a laziness, a delay in the act of worship. And these are some of the statements of the Salihin of this Ummah. Uwais al-Qarni rahmatullah alayhi, once he said, remember death when you sleep and always think of it when you are awake. Ibn al-Mubarak rahmatullah alayhi said, that Salih al-Mari, another Salih used to say, if the remembrance of death leaves me for an hour, my heart becomes spoiled, becomes ghafil, neglectful. Ibn Masood said, a believer has no rest until he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then in this dunya, there is no continuous peace and rest. There is going to be trials and tribulations. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises, you shall certainly be tried and tested in your wealth and properties. Another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Recite our, our Qari before the session started. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We shall test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of wealth, lives and fruits. So this is the way that every one of us is going to live on this planet Earth. It's not going to be just smooth going. Something, somewhere is going to happen. Either there'll be loss of property or wealth or the loved ones. And then our reaction to that, how we handle the test, how we react to that, that's what's going to determine our success or failure. And there are many other ayat which tell us that the trials are inevitable and they are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَا أَصَابَ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يَوْمٍ بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبَهِ وَاللَّهِ بِكُلِّ شَيْنَ عَلِيمٍ Surah Al-Taghabun 
No calamity befalls, but with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission. And whoever believes in Allah, he guides his heart. Allah is all knower of everything. And then Surah Ali Imran says, Am hasibtum an tadkhulu jannata wa lamma ya'lam illahu alladhina jahadu minkum wa ya'lam as-sawabirin. Do you think you shall enter the Jannah before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test those of you who struggle in his way and test those who are sabirin, are the patient? Another important part of this test, and we like to focus a little bit on that, is because of this atmosphere as Islamophobia which we see today. This is not something which was coming without any warning. This is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already told us. This is something which happened in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and later on in different parts of the Islamic history. That the people of the book, they have engaged in propaganda against Islam and spreading rumors against Islam and the Prophet of Islam ridiculing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the book of Allah, and the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذَنْ كَثِيرًا You shall certainly hear much that will grieve you from those who received the scriptures before you and from those who ascribe portents to Allah. So this is something which has been forewarned. So that's why we, we have seen in the past and we see today the mockery and bigotry, hatred against Islam and the Prophet of Islam, violent attacks upon Muslims, homes and masajid, threats of direct monitoring, racial profiling, job discriminations, and some cases of deportations media campaign of misinformation about Islam, while marks towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator and sustainer of the world, and insulting remarks about Quran. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this good news, that inna kafayna kal mustahzi'een, alladheena yaj'aluna ma'an la ilahan akhar fasofa ya'lamoon. وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ إِنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ فَصَبِّحْ بِحَمْدَ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّوَاجِدِينَ وَعْبُدْ رَبُّكَ حَتَّى يَاتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, For sufficient are we unto those against those who resort to mockery. Those who adopt with Allah another God, but soon will they come to know. We do indeed know how they, thy heart is distressed at what they say, but celebrate the praises of your Lord and be of those who prostrate themselves in adoration and serve your Lord until you come unto the hour of that which is certain. There are four levels of response to the trials, and I will go quickly, the time is short, and we have other knowledgeable speakers to share their knowledge with us. One is to become angry to this, to this uh, mockery and to this uh, Islamophobia. The angry, to become angry is something which is really undesirable and it is not something which produces any positive result. And the second important thing is sabr, which has been recommended and is wajib. Third is to be pleased with it. And fourth is to, be, to show shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are ayat of Quran which tell us that we should not become angry on that, we should not show distress about that, and we should show sabr, patience and perseverance in these circumstances, keep our senses and plan how to respond positively in these circumstances. And the tr objectives of the trials are to uh, increase our faith and rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Jannah and forgiveness of our sins and also the trials differentiate between those who are true believers and those who are, who have, who are hypocrite and the truth prevails in these trials if we stay on the right path. 
So those who are true believers, their attitude in these trials are of sabr and keep their mind and, and their plan straight to the right path. And they show right attitude, right behavior, and goodness even in the, in the circumstances which are very difficult. And this sabr is to be shown in all kinds of difficult challenges in relation to the opponents, showing obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also refraining from disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> and as a result of this sabr, there are a lot of positive things which happen to the believers, to the community, and Allah's help and assistance is with those who show sabr. And how do we achieve the sabr is through the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and looking at the seerah and example of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and developing strong faith in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then having taqwa of Allah. So these two things which are told to us in these ayah to have sabr and taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are many ayat and hadith which tell us what taqwa is. Taqwa is to remain steadfast in obeying the command of Allah and avoid the prohibition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there are ways and means to achieve the taqwa and that the major means is to hold fast to Quran and its teachings and stay steadfast in the path of righteousness and hold fast to the jamaat of salihin and learn from them. So these are some of the things I would like to share with you. I conclude now at the end to say that ultimately we should have our dependence and tawakkal upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala under all circumstances, particularly in the circumstances that we feel today, we are in today of Islamophobia and the bigotry and the hatred which we face as Muslim community. We should have our full tawakkal upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his promise is Quran. And we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma anfa'ani bima allimtani, wa'allimni ma yanfa'ani wa zidni ilma. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the knowledge which is beneficial and increase our knowledge and help to raise our children who have Islamic knowledge and practice this knowledge and walk on the path of Islam and work for the cause of Islam and be successful in this dunya and the akhirah. Qulu qulu hadha wa astaghfiru wa lakum wa lisa'i muslimin wa astaghfiru innu al-ghafur rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.